Hi, can everyone hear me? Oh, or maybe I have everyone muted. There we go. Okay, this is my very first um, WebEx meeting, so welcome. <laughs> Everyone's doing well today. Weather's pretty nice out here. So I think everyone should see my screen. Um, so I'm going to get started and, um, let's see, there seems like everyone is currently muted because I'm the presenter and I'm trying to figure out where. Let's see, here we go. Chat. Cool. So I can see the chat. So if you have questions, you can ask them in the chat. Uh, is there, let's see, I think Ben just joined. Oh. Yeah, there you go. So you can talk. This is my first WebEx, so we're just getting started, um, and I'm trying to make sure I understand what our um, best practices are. So it seems like you and I can talk, mm -hmm. and um, everyone else is currently muted, or they're very polite and have muted themselves. Um, I think they, I think they can unmute <clears throat> okay. themselves. I don't think you have to. You have to do it. All right. Um, and there should be a chat window. Yep. Okay. So. so it's all set. And you can see my screen, but you can't see my face right now. Is that true? I can see both because I can see your screen and then uh, and then okay, your cool. face is up on the top of the screen. There's a little um there's a little row of people. Okay, cool. So let's see who do we have here. So Chloe is here, Gail, Ibiki, Jordan, Julia, Palmer. Tatum, Xavier. Hey, everybody. Okay. So I don't know if we want to wait until five minutes in to start the sure. slide deck or. I'm glad everybody found the reminder. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry for saying out the reminder earlier without a time attached to it. But I mean, what is time, really? You know. Certainly ephemeral. So I'm going to get started. So we have, um, this is just going to run through our um, general plan for the summer program. Um, this will be our fifth year running it. Um, so it's going to be running from June 8th through July 31st. Uh, it's a applied pre incubation accelerator program. Um, so it's generally our goal is um, to take existing teams and um, give them the knowledge and the opportunity to be able to grow into 
um, a business. So the idea is that this is more entrepreneurial focused than um, what you would necessarily be doing in a regular class. So you'll be receiving mentorship. Um, we'll have presentations where you'll learn about the business of games and you'll work towards developing a series of MVP, MVP prototypes. So, um, and this is kind of a new component um, from the previous few years where in the past couple of years, you've come with one big idea and you've kind of worked on that. Um, and so our current um, plan is to kind of narrow that down into a bunch of uh, prototypes or um, MVPs. So the, having the core mechanic and working through a bunch of those and seeing, um, you know, how each different idea can work, like, does it work? Um, and trying to um, kind of pull your team um, more to the forefront than a specific idea. Um, because what we're seeing is that a lot of times it's really uh, you and your team and your skill set that's more important than necessarily the particular idea that you currently have and are working on. Um, so the goals for the program are to elevate the commercial potential of your studio or team, depending on what state you're in, uh, create uh, valuable experiences for you so that when you're here, you're learning lots of things that you can take away um, for your future. Uh, we want to be able to learn from you and also um, so that you can learn from each other, um, gain alignment among your team members so that you can uh, come together and be a more robust team once you're finished. Um, isolate gaps in your thinking. So, um, you know, you've been working on your ideas or you have, you know, your, your group together. So what is missing? What, you know, there's always the things that you don't even know to think about. And that's kind of what we're trying to engage with um, during the summer program. Um, so can uh, consider different options to launch and monetize your game. So, um, you know, a lot of times we just think of, you know, we want to make the, you know, our product and we want to put it on Steam for $10. Is that the best way to do it? Or are there other ways that you may not have considered? Um, pivot, which is a huge thing in business. Um, mentoring and feedback. So you'll be able to discuss with faculty and uh, industry experts about the ideas that you have. You'll have a uh, stipend, so you'll be able to use that funding. Um, you'll learn more about our ecosystem and you'll be connected with resources. And that was a lot of text. I just realized. <laughs> so, um, does, does anyone have questions or we can go, we can hold the questions to the end. I don't know what people would prefer. Do you have anything to add, Ben? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I am muted. So it, uh, also interesting interface thing. So when when your microphone is muted, there will be a little icon that says that your microphone is muted. But clicking that doesn't actually unmute your microphone. You have to go find a different one. To unmute that. Anyway, no, that's yeah, that, that's a good um, uh, yeah, good good overview of all the stuff that we uh, that we do with the program. Yeah. yeah, and if anyone has questions, you can you can just um, you know turn your mic on and interrupt, or you can just type in the chat, um, whichever you like. So, slide. So the details is normally location is a huge thing, um, but as we've learned this morning, um, we're going to be moving towards being remote for the summer. So this will be a remote only program. So it'll be very exciting because it'll be the first time we've been a remote program. <laughs> this is this is an example on the previous slide where it said pivot. This is an example of what <laughs> what that means. You know, you have one. You know, you have one plan for what a what a product is that you're going to put out, and then something else happens that uh, you didn't expect, and you have to pivot. So it'll be a learning process for everybody. Um, I think it's more important that we're able to have the program in a digital format than to not have it at all. Um, and we're going to be looking at different LMS systems so that people can have their work up so it can be reviewed and so that we can connect with mentors and make sure um, everyone is able to share what you would normally share in person. Um, so that'll be <laughs> something we're going to be developing as uh, we get closer to June. Um, so with that in mind, um, 
currently our hope is that the teams that we select are going to be based in New York state. Obviously we would encourage anyone to apply, even if you're, you know, not from the general area. Um, but uh, because our, this uh, program is funded through a grant given to us from New York state, um, it would make sense to do that. But um, in general, I would encourage everyone to apply and we can work through, you know, the logistics if you end up not falling in that set. Um, if you're an RPI student, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't matter. Just please apply and um, we'll go through that. Um, the duration will still be eight weeks. Um, the benefits, you'll receive a stipend. Um, so it's 3,500 for each team member. Um, and um, we have a set amount. So if there's for some reason a deluge of teams and it ends up being that we don't have enough funding, we'd work through it all together. Um, so we'll be giving you presentations and one-on-one -on -one mentoring with industry experts. Um, and previously opportunity to showcase work at local events. So <laughs> we don't know if that's actually gonna happen or not. Um, there is still Empire Game Expo, which is still supposedly going, that's gonna be in July. And then there's a showcase at the, uh, the beginning of August. Um, which we had presented at previously, those have not canceled yet. So maybe that, or maybe we'll find some other way of showcasing our work in a larger group. Um, so that's kind of one key thing we'll be trying to figure out in the next couple of weeks. Um, so the requirements, if you want to participate in the program, you must be able to attend um, during that eight week program. The expectation is that you're working on your game full time, like you're working on the program full time. Um, so if you're not able to commit to the amount of work um, that would be needed for your team to succeed, that would be, you know, um, a reason why you should consider, uh, you know, not attending. Um, you must be able to attend the digital one on ones and presentations during the program, which is kind of the same, you know, full time thing. Um, so you also should be um, an active participant in the program. So you should attend the presentations. You should do the weekly one on ones play tests. Um, we're going to do well, we say it, so we are going to have some sort of status report and assignments. Um, so that'll come up as we go through um, this year. We're thinking of it mainly as being these prototypes that we're building. Um, so there may not be as many assignments as in previous years. So, and then, um. Our staff, so we have um, Ben, who's the director of the, um, he's the director of GSAS and the PI on uh, the Center of Excellence grant. So he's the, <laughs> the top of the chain, um, making sure that this program continues and um, providing lots of wonderful insight. I am the program coordinator or director of um, the summer program. So I do a lot of the logistics um, and organization for it and try to make sure that all of the things that we've done over the past few years, gets integrated into each successful new year um, so that we can learn and make a bigger and better program each year or different year in this case. Um, we should still be having Dave Sharp. Um, he is, um, going to be the entrepreneur in residence for this year. He was here last year and provided a lot of um, business expertise because he has been in the industry for um, many, many years um, and has a lot of um, insight into the business end of digital games. Um, he is currently in the UK, so um, we're trying to work out with him um, what that means now that we know that we, we're not going to be um, in a physical space. Um, and then Marie Suckling, who's also part of the Center of Excellence grant. Um, and he is a faculty member and has uh, worked on BAFTA award winning uh, games, um, specifically focused on um, a game narrative. Um, and we'll have um, a set of mentors and other presenters from the local area and perhaps this year <laughs> remote from who knows where across the globe. Uh, to deliver other important information for um, everyone who attends. Um, and that's really it. It's a short presentation aside from that one slide that had way too many bullet points. Um, so are there any questions?
can't be shy. Come on. <laughs> I can't, I can't have given all of the information. How does this program work with the arch? Um, so. Ben can speak more to the, uh. This, like requirements of the arch, I guess, but from our understanding, um, this would not, this is a, isn't something that you would be doing for credit. So, um, if you're doing a full course load of arch, you probably wouldn't have the amount of time to dedicate to this, but Ben, you might have more. Yeah, I think it could be, it could still be possible. Um, <clears throat> the, you know, the, the program is designed with the expectation that you're kind of working on it full time and that, that you're able to make it all the presentations and stuff like that. Um, now, so up in like, uh, uh, so previously we had, we had figured, well, you wouldn't really be able to do Arch and do this at the same time um, because you kind of have to be like in class all the time at the same time that you're supposed to be um, uh, working on working on this program. That said, in an all online format, there might be more, actually more flexibility to pull that off um, because all of the uh, all of the courses that you you would be taking uh, for Arch, those are those are also going to be uh, remote learning, online delivery, um, as well. Um, and I know all of you know all of the classes were uh, were you know running them in different ways. So some of them are based more around um, still having like scheduled class time with synchron you know synchronous uh, lectures and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and some of them are doing more asynchronous things where there's less of an emphasis on specific blocks of time for uh, video conference lectures and more like flipped classroom kinds of things where you're watching pre-recorded videos or doing work in other different ways. Um, so the there, there might actually more be more flexibility and possibility to do, do this and do Arch at the same time than we had initially thought, which could actually be a good thing. Um, so if you're doing Arch for the summer, um, I would say don't rule this out. Like, uh, go ahead and you can go ahead and apply for this anyway. Um, and then if you get selected uh, for, uh, for it, then we'll try and work out the actual schedule stuff to see, see, see if you can pull it off. Um, let's see, Jordan asks, <clears throat> do I have any ideas about who would give pre presentations? And is it officially the case that there are only the prototypes as assignments or is it still um, up in the air? Um, Amanda? So for the know. for the presentations, um, we have a few um, people from the um, local area who are um, business experts that we're looking at having come back. So we have um, um, uh, wow, my brain. Um, the we'll have a lawyer come, for, Rich Honan from. Phillips and Lytle come and talk about um, business formalization. Um, we'll also have Heidi Noblotch coming in to talk about um, financing options um, because she she works at uh, Pioneer and um, that's kind of her area of expertise. Um, and then for the more specific, um, what do you call it, like uh, tech, like if you have tech um discussion or if it's more craft focused that's something that we would be developing based on what the specific needs are for the teams um so in our previous year um we had um on the first kickoff day we kind of came together and discussed what everyone's specific needs are so that we could um find people in the local area that would have that specific skill set um we'll also probably have someone discussing um like social media management and uh, PR and marketing. Again, um, we're still looking uh, to find who we would use for marketing specifically because we want to find someone who is um, who has the specific niche of knowing about games marketing, and that's not something that we really have in the local area. So we're we're trying to figure out you know for that sort of thing. Um, but then the more skilled things are things that will come up as as we know what people are lacking in. Um, and what your project needs are, because, you know, if you don't have multiplayer, you don't need a multiplayer expert, but that might be something that you would need if that's something you're doing. 
Um, and then also for the prototypes and assignments, or is that still up in the air? So the original idea um, is to do the prototypes. I think we're going to have to uh, take a step back and think about if that's going to work well in remote in the remote uh, deliverable idea. Um, I think if we are doing a bunch of prototypes, that's going to be the most like the uh, the greater part of the work. Um, and so there probably won't be a lot of other uh, like business plan and those sort of assignments. But if we are going back towards having one general idea that you're working on, um, you will be doing a lot more business oriented things. Um, so the general idea is that when you're forming your teams, you'll want to have one person who's more dedicated to figuring out how to run your company or you know, form your team as a business so that they're able to focus on those sort of uh, requirements and tasks where you might have an engineer who's more focused on making the build run. Um, because as I'm sure people are learning as, um, you know, as you're looking at, um, like if you are looking at becoming an independent developer, um, you really, the pitch deck isn't really gonna sell your idea anymore. Um, you have to have some kind of playable prototype before you can really even talk to publishers these days. And I'll just follow on one thought about the um, um, the presentations. Uh, so it, <laughs> in previous years, we've primarily brought people uh, from, uh, from local companies uh, from the area. Uh, we had Guha Bala come in and give a uh, talk. Um, on the games business, um, he was talking, I think, particularly about how to assemble a prof, uh, uh, profit and loss sheet. Was that <laughs> was that topic? Um, and so generally, we've you know we brought people from the from the area. Um, one of the other things that that does open up as more of a possibility with running online is that we can bring try and bring more people uh, uh, remotely because that would just now be the standard. So. Like last year or the year before, you know, we had Anton Hand um, uh, from Rust Limited, who's the designer of hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, uh, and he gave a uh, gave a Skype talk uh, about uh, virtual reality development. Um, so we can ha have uh, folks like him from all over the world uh, that we can pull on for uh, this one that has more of like the normal normal format. Um, Amanda, did we say when the, uh, wh where people go to apply and when the applications are due? Yes. So to apply, let's see. Yes. Okay, cool. So there's the events listing that got posted for this seminar, and then you can go to the website slash level up state and. Yes. Okay. The issue is that the Google form isn't hot linked on here. Let's see. This is my chat, so. so you go there and you have all the information and you fill out the form. Um, and we have um, a selection committee this year. Officially, it's great. Um, <laughs> uh, so we have a bunch of, uh, we have um, industry experts and um, faculty who are going to be reviewing the presentations. We want to do it as a two minute pitch um, or uh, like a video presentation. Um, I leave it to everyone to collaborate and find an exciting way to do a team pitch if that's either one person speaking or you use Premiere or something to snip everything together. Um, it's really up to you. Um, the normally um, we've done like one on one presentations where we would, you know, set up a phone call. So this is kind of trying to um, streamline that process. So. Let's see, and is there anything else that they need to include in the in the application uh, or. Uh, in addition to the video. Well, the completing the form and that's really it. If you go through the form, it should tell you everything you need. The video is probably the most important thing um, within here. The question I hear a lot is, you know, do I need to have a playable 
build? Like, do I have to have something that's like a playable build, a prototype already when we start the program, or is it okay to start if it's just if I just sort of have an idea? It is a hundred percent okay to start with just an idea, especially this year because of the prototype format. So I definitely would encourage everyone to apply, even if you're on the fence. So when our submissions are due um, Friday, we have been talking about potentially extending them um, a week just because uh, of the change to being remote. Um, so it kind of changes the pool of people who can attend. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage people to submit early. Well, thank you everyone for coming out today. I mean, <laughs> as out as it's possible. <laughs> uh, I've, I've adapted to a remote we website. Came out of one room into this room that, that has yes. the different computer in it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, and definitely feel free to reach me by email if you have any additional questions. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.